Things like the oil shock thus far haven't thrown the U.S. economy off its stride, but there are some signs of possible difficulties ahead. We talked with, earlier today with Republican Senator Mike Brown of uh, Indiana about where he sees the economy and whether the president should back off on things like a trade war with China and sanctions on Iran to make sure we don't enter a downturn. No, I don't think so, and I've been at it 37 years before I uh, came to D.C., and when the legislation took place back in December of 2017, the Jobs and Tax Cut Act, by far the biggest thing for a Main Street entrepreneur that I've ever noticed. I was so happy Senator Ron Johnson dug in to make sure that small businesses were taken through, uh, taken care of, because when you look at what we're organized as, it's generally not a C Corp. It would be a sub S or an LLC. And I was disappointed that it looked like all the emphasis was on C Corps. So I can tell you it's as hot as it's ever been. And the fact that we're going this deep into a recovery tells you that the stage was set. So when it comes to tariffs, when it comes to any of the other things there, don't lose sight of the fact that we've set the stage for growth well into the future that's going to be closer to 25 to 3% in GDP growth, not the mediocrity that we were kind of glued into during the Obama years. So, Senator, how do you square that view with some of the indications of a downturn, even some of a recession? I mean, you can talk about the yield curve with the 10 year treasury. You can talk about some of the manufacturing downturn. Some people think we're in a partial recession, actually, when it comes to manufacturing. How do you square that with your bullish take? Well, it's the long run and the short run. Uh, as I said earlier, this recovery, due to the fundamentals that were in place before President Trump got elected, we would be in a full-blown recession. There's no doubt about it. Here, I think despite some of the choppy waters out there, no one can really say if we're going to pr uh, be proceeding into the future uh, how far in this healthy fashion. My opinion is it's going to be there much longer than even what the experts say, despite the headwinds. We've recently seen China, you know, starting to crack a little bit. Uh, heard over the weekend when it comes to importing soybeans and pork. You know, when they're talking about relaxing that, that means the strategy is working. And for anyone that went with their supply chain deeply into China and allured by the market of 1.4 billion people, it is a healthy time to look to see how you adjust your supply chain. And you don't hear about that often, but that's occurring. And that'll help extend things into the future. One of the things that people are looking at right now is the supply of oil and what's going on with that. I think it's fair to say crisis over with the attacks on the Saudi oil fields. How do you assess the scope of that da damage and danger? How much of danger could that play? pose for the global economy. I think it clearly shows, too, that uh, the president has called Iran out correctly. This whole argument that had we stayed in that agreement, to me, you need to look at where we were and we weren't knocking it out of the park when it comes with Iran or North Korea, all the trouble spots around the world. I think here clearly, and I just heard this morning that they've linked it directly to Iran, they have shown themselves for what they're about. And that's that despite their economy, despite the fact that uh, a lot of other places are doing well and they focus only on international mischief and terrorism in places, and this is an example of where I think they're going to be held accountable and that we were doing the right things, and thank goodness we weren't locked into an agreement that was going to give them cover. So what we do in terms of response, I trust the team, and uh, I think this is just another indication that Iran is what they are. Senator Braun, you're recognized as, a, if I can call you that, a rock rib conservative. You're proud of your conservative heritage. At the same time, you now have announced a caucus in the Senate, a bipartisan caucus on climate change uh, with Chris Coons, your fellow Democrat senator. senator. Uh, why are you doing that? It looks like you're find, trying to find a third way on some of these issues to, to sort of bridge over the difference between red and blue. So very simple. I am a Main Street entrepreneur, and you get things fixed by not sticking your head in the sand. Democrats always get out in front of Republicans in identifying the issue, uh, whether it's coming to climate or health care. 
healthcare I took on my own and made a sustainable system that cut costs 11 years ago, based it on wellness, not remediation, getting the uh, employee patient engaged in his or her own well-being, and it works. I'm trying to get that to rub off in the Senate for solutions. Climate, we cannot stick our head in the sand either there. You know, we're pumping carbon into the atmosphere. It has a greenhouse effect. Let's focus on, do you try to do the Green New Deal, which there's no way we could pay for it, or do we talk about practical things like reforestation, uh, acknowledging that we've got the cleanest air anywhere in the world and that our two main economic partners are still building coal plants, doing things that keep their air filthy. There's a lot of good things to talk about. If we do, like most conservatives and Republicans do, apologize for people that we may have an interest in in terms of industry or so forth, don't honestly talk about the issues, the Democrats will win again with things that we will regret because it will involve more government, more bureaucracy, and it won't work.